Last year, on August 19th, my friend Sean and I fixed up his project car, a 1978 Datsun 280Z, and drove it on the street for the very first time to go to Frederick, Maryland and autocross the car. This year, we made plans to return to the same autocross course. Sean was determined to set a better time with his car. So we spent a lot of time installing new parts and fine-tuning the car. We installed a much quieter exhaust system, adjustable rear control arms, fixed the car's high idle, installed new wheels and tires, and removed some of the toe out from the front wheels. We spent the week leading up to the autocross event working on the car every day. But while Sean had always planned to bring the Datsun to this autocross event, I decided to bring my project car, this 1978 Firebird, as well. Now, a small light car, like a 280Z, really lends itself well to autocross. Now, something much larger and at least a thousand pounds heavier like a second gen F body doesn't lend itself quite as well to an autocross event. But that's exactly why it sounds like fun. So in the week leading up to the autocross event, we also did a lot of work to the Firebird. We corrected the shoe placement on the rear drum brakes, installed a new set of tires, replaced a cracked carburetor base plate, got the transmission kick down working, and installed some aftermarket gauges. There's nothing quite like a deadline to force you to get work done. So I was up tuning the carburetor and test driving the Firebird until 2 a.m. the night before. But that's not all that unusual for working on cars. We were up by 6 a.m. and ready to head back to Frederick. This was a true test drive for both vehicles as they had both undergone a fair amount of work and only been taken on very short test drives since then. But no issues showed up on the way to the track and we made it there right on time. We removed some of the gear from our vehicles and took them through tech inspection. Unlike last time, we didn't encounter any problems and both vehicles got the okay. We had some time to kill before our turn on the track during which we met up with some old friends and made some new friends. We watched the first two heats of cars run. And soon enough, they were calling for heat three. I spent a few more minutes tuning the carburetor on the Firebird, but it still wasn't a perfect idle. But it was time to head to the track, so we both warmed up our cars and headed over. We lined up our cars, the Datsun in front, followed by the Firebird, and when it was our turn to drive, we inched forward car by car until the Datsun was at the starting line. first run on the Datsun was smooth, and the final time was 45.82. So next up was my turn. I was just worried about following the course because I had a hard time visualizing things with just cones to reference. And after a little bit of difficulty staging, I finally had the car on the line and ready to run. But on the very first turn, the car had an issue. The rear tires were rubbing. And between this significant distraction and my nerves, on the crossover, I ended up on the wrong side of a cone and the time was disqualified. Right after the run, I hopped out and made sure the tires weren't going to damage anything. They were rubbing against the exhaust, but it was far enough out on the tread that I figured I could get away with finishing the runs for the morning. And a few minutes later, it was once again Sean's turn.
timeout, he shaved off over a second for a time of 44.24. However, the G-forces in the corners was enough to push fuel through the vent hose on the fuel cell and start spraying it on the track. So Sean wasn't able to make any more runs until he fixed the problem. So the Datsun was done for the morning heat, but the Firebird still had two runs left to go. This time I was alone in the car and fully focused on staying on course. put the transmission in first gear and kept it there the whole time. I didn't even use the brakes, but I stayed on course and scored a 50-22. I went back through the queue and made one final attempt. This time I decided to hit the course even harder. but I obviously wasn't over my distraction problem because once again, I messed up the turn at the crossover. But even though the time was disqualified, I didn't let it stop me from having fun. And so we found ourselves back in the parking lot. The Firebird was retired for the day because I was too concerned about the rubbing tires. It doesn't seem like there was any damage done, but the rubbing was quite loud and worrying. But the Datsun still had a chance. Sean, what happened? fuel cell, the new breather that we just installed um, on one of the corners, it just dumped all of the fuel out, or like a lot of the fuel out. So they got mad at me for dumping fuel out on the track. For ruining their track. Yeah. What it really needed was some sort of valving to keep fuel from coming out of that hose. But we figured we might be able to get away without one if we removed some of the fuel from the tank. Right before driving there, we had both filled up at the gas station, so the Datsun had a very full tank of gas. By unhooking the hose after the fuel pump, we were able to use that pump to drain out some of the gas. We removed three or four cans of gas from the Datsun and emptied them into Rob's car. Conveniently, both cars used 93 octane. Now that the fuel level in the cell was significantly lower, we had some hopes that that would help keep it from spilling. So when Heat 3 came up again in the afternoon, the Datsun returned to the line. It was really special to see how many people came over to root for the Datsun. It wasn't the cleanest car there, and certainly not the most mechanically sound, but it's hard not to love the character that little car has. And soon enough, it was once again time for it to run. Once again, Sean drove well, but unfortunately he hit two cones, so his total time was 46-43. But Sean was determined to keep on improving his time, so in the next run, Sean really went for it. But unfortunately, he got flagged again, because there was still fuel coming out the vent hose. Do we, are we leaking something? Oh, yeah. Honestly, it wasn't that surprising to see this issue come back up, but it was disappointing. Yeah, you can smell it now. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it looks like it. Well, there goes that. But despite this ending, everyone still flocks to the car and shows their support. Some rollover valves and stuff that have yeah, a... Rollover valves are the opposite. Uh, something like that. Oh, it is that sketch? This is bad. <laughs> That's the goal! <laughs> so, by the end of the day, both of our cars had failed to finish the six runs they had signed up for. But, that's okay. 
we both got the chance to push our cars and push ourselves to get them ready to be there in the first place. And you know what? Both cars survived. Hell, I'd call that a win. And we all got the chance to hang out with some friends, old and new, eat some cheap pizza, and spend time near some loud cars. So you know, it's okay that I ended up at the bottom of the scoreboard, because it was definitely still an experience worth remembering.